Hi everyone, what's new in Playwright version 1.44? Let's take a look. First of all, tip of the day, Snapshot is a live DOM, did you know that? So basically when you open the trace viewer, you can step through each action of your test and you get a live DOM. So you can see the full DOM of what's happening in the test at that point of time. But did you know that you can undock it? You can click on that little button there and that's gonna open it up in its own window and because it's a live snapshot, you can then open DevTools and you can modify it, edit it, debug it, etc. Very cool, snapshot is a live DOM. Let's get on to the latest update. Playwright 1.44, what is new? Here's our agenda. We have VS Code extension UI updates. Watch mode is finally in VS Code and we've got projects as well. We'll show a full demo of that in a second. Accessible assertions. You can now assert for role, accessible name and description. You can now run the last failed test via the CLI. Locator handler's got some new options, new behavior. Locator is a parameter and times. And clear cookie options. Delete multiple cookies with matching criteria. A VS Code extension update, watch mode and projects. Let's take a look with a quick demo. So over here in VS Code, you can see I now can hover over here and I can see this eye icon. So I can run a continuous run on all of my tests or a specific file. Let's just take the example file here. I'm now running that test on that file. Now let's go ahead and open it and let's modify this test. As soon as I press save, it's gonna run all the tests in that file. Very cool. It's watching everything I do in that file. Now if I only wanted to watch a single test, I can uncheck it here and then click the icon here. It's now gonna watch this test that I'm watching, right? This gets started. So let's edit this. You can see the second test is only being watched. So the second test is only being run. That means I can go along here, say playwright is cool in the first test and it's not gonna get run because I'm not watching it. Okay, so really, really important. Make sure you know what you're watching. <laughs> so that is a VS Code extension watch mode, but let's have a look at projects. So you have your settings, show browser, show trace viewer here and all your tools as usual for recording. And then just down below, we now have projects. So I can click on, for example, uh, the Firefox project. And now if I go along here, I can see I have access to Firefox and I can just press play and I run only that test in Firefox. So that's really cool and really accessible for all my projects. But notice this setup. I have a setup test already being run. So already being set up. So I've got a login.setup test that I wrote and now I have access to it. If I uncheck this, it's hidden, it's gone, it doesn't exist. But by clicking here, I now can see all the setup tests that I've created. And again, I can go ahead and run this test and uh, run that setup, which is logging in. It's doing a login to a uh, website and then I can run my logged in test to make sure I'm actually logged in. And you can see that now that test is running the do login first and then it's running the logged in. And again, I could do the same with the logged out. I can run that test. It's first running the login and then it's running the log user out test. Again, I can hide this setup here if I don't want to run the setup test. I'm now not running the setup test and then I go along and I run that logged in user and it's not gonna run that login test because I have not selected it here. So that's really cool. Again, you can set up projects, Firefox, WebKit, and you can then select to run on all of those. So let's get back to our slides. Quick recap, VS Code extension updates, turn on watch mode for a single test, a group of tests or all tests, and projects, choose which projects to run your tests on and choose to run your setup tests as well. Next, accessibility assertions. This is really cool. You can now run tests for assertions to check the accessibility for name, description, and role. Let's take a look at that. So we've got assert the accessible name. For example, you've got a locator with a test ID submit, and now you can expect that locator to have an accessible name of submit. So especially when using test IDs, this is really, really useful because you wanna make sure you're testing that accessibility. Again, you can assert the accessible description. So a page, get by test ID, upload, and expect that locator to have an accessible description of upload a photo. And you can assert the accessible role. So again, that test ID, uh, save button it's called, but you know, the user doesn't know what a test ID is. So you wanna expect that locator to have the role of button. And again, checking those accessible assertions, very, very cool. Next, run last failed test. 
for CLI option. So what happens here? I'm running my tests, right? I run all my tests and two tests failed, but I've got 101 tests, it's a lot of tests. And if I modify that test and then run it via the CLI again, it's gonna just like take so long. I only wanna focus on those two failed tests. I wanna run those again. So I go and fix those failing tests and then I run it again with dash dash last failed. And look, you can see it now running two tests using two workers and the two tests passed. So it makes it much quicker when you're running your tests via CLI. Locator handler has got some new options. So we've changed a little bit of the behavior. So now the handler waits for the overlay to disappear. So if you're using handling locators with locator handler, now the handler waits for the overlay to disappear. You can also use the locator as a parameter. So here is how we would have written it previously. And now just watch here, after the async, you can pass in that locator. And then instead of uh, writing await get by label close.click twice, you just pass in that locator and then it's locator.click. So it makes it much simpler. And you can also remove the handler after a number of invocations by setting times. So times one, um, remove it after one time. Next, clear cookies, new options for clear cookies. You can remove all cookies, await context or clear cookies, or you can use the domain and put in myorigin.com, for example, and clear the cookies just from that domain. Or you can clear the cookies from a specific name like session ID or this specific path like API version one, or you can mix them together a name and a domain that is our clear cookies. So a summary for Playwright version 1.44, VS Code extension, UI updates, watch modern projects, very cool accessible assertions now you have no excuses for making sure your website is accessible you can assert for role accessible name and description run your last test that failed via the cli very cool and uh, locator handler has some new options check that out the new behavior locator is a parameter at times and clear cookie options delete multiple cookies matching the criteria make sure you update playwright to the latest version npm i d at playwright slash test at latest and any other miscellaneous, please check out our documentation or the release notes to see all the other um, extra things that we have there in the miscellaneous section for the release. And that is, is it. Make sure you check out our resources, make sure you're reading the docs, uh, make sure you're testing your applications more importantly, and follow us on all socials, Discord, YouTube, Twitter, etc. Thank you everyone and happy testing. See you in the next release.